Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm going to spare no expense taking a look at unmatched Jurassic Park in-gen versus Raptors. Unmatched, as you may already know, is a game system into which uh, several characters have been plugged into. Now here we have an unmatched set, one of a couple of a few that is based of course on the intellectual property of Jurassic Park and we've got two decks in here you will be playing uh, against one other player choosing one of those two sides to play trying to take your opponent out all right I'm going to give you uh, a quick look at how the game works in case you're not familiar with Unmatched it will not be a very in-depth description of the game and then I'll show you what these decks do a bit this is again not really a strategy uh, uh point of view and then we'll come on back up here and i'll tell you what i think of it okay let's dive into it so here we're taking a look at what the game comes with you've got this board the single-sided board just this uh the uh raptor paddock and you've got the three raptors being one side with their deck their dials then the other side is uh robert muldoon and the in-gen worker guys and uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview just in case you don't know how Unmatched in general works, okay? So, you've got the two sides. You are trying to take down your opponent. You're going to do that by bringing their life dial uh, of their hero down to zero. Uh, one thing to note in this set is that this side with the Raptors has essentially three heroes, each one starting at seven health. You have to take down all three in order to defeat them. So you're gonna have a hand of five cards and on your turn you are going to do up to two actions. The actions are listed on this player aid and you can do a maneuver, you can do a scheme or you can do an attack. A maneuver allows you to draw a card from your deck and then you can uh, move all of your uh, figures up to your move limit over here. In this case three for the Raptors and also three for uh, Injun. Uh, the second option is a scheme. You can play a scheme from your hand that happens to have this symbol up here. You do whatever it says. In this case, if I do this, uh, the raptors are working things out. It says, move each of your raptors up to three spaces. You may move them through spaces containing opposing fighters, which you normally cannot do. And then you gain one action. So if you play this card, it replaces its own action. You have another action after doing this very powerful stuff. And then lastly, you can do an attack, right? So let's say these little fellas have moved around here and uh, ended up, oh, let's put him right there, shall we? He's going to go right there. And this little guy is going to surround and go right there. You're going to play a card from your hand as the attack. The opponent may play a defense card and they are revealed. So let's go ahead and give uh, Robert here a fighting chance. He's going to play that. I'm going to play this one. Once we've both done so, they are revealed and we compare them. So sometimes cards will say immediately something happens, during combat something happens, or after combat something happens. Uh, we're going to compare the strengths. It's five attack, uh, four defense. So Muldoon is going to take one hit, go down to 13 from 14. And then this one after combat, uh, move each of your fighters up to five spaces. You may move them through spaces containing opposing fighters. Again, very sneaky tactics. So he might go uh, one, two, three, four, let's say, not a full five. And then move the rest of these guys. Move this guy over here to contain. Uh, maybe move this guy. Oh, I don't know. He's going to move in here. One, two, three, four, and uh, five right there. Try to contain that one outside. So that's it. That's basically it. You do two of those things, and then it's the, the other players go, all right? Now, a couple of things that are specific to this set. Let me start with the board. As you just saw, this little uh, ha hapless worker here went into the paddock and then had to make his way out of this one spot because there is no other way. So you'll notice on this board, it is a very interesting flow. These arrows denote that that's a one-way path. And it, there is an interesting kill zone that happens right here in the center of the board. If you get trapped in there, if you get locked down in there, thankfully some of these cards, as you saw, let you move through enemy fighters. 
But if you get pinned down in there, it's going to be an ugly day. So be aware of that. It's really interesting. I like the layout of this board a lot. It's a very unique, uh, engaging board. The Raptors. Their main special ability here is that when you play an attack card, it's going to have plus one attack, the value, for each other Raptor that is adjacent to the defender. So in that scenario I gave you, uh, that was, I don't know, something like that, let's say. It actually would have been plus one to that attack. So he would have taken another hit. Because this Raptor was around Muldoon as well. So it's all about surrounding your victim and attacking as a pack. As, as some of the cards suggest, uh, pack hunters. And of course, clever girl. And they remember. And all these things. Coordinated attack pattern. So these Raptors are extremely good at surrounding, having extra actions to um, move into position and then strike. That's what they're doing. And so, ideally, playing them, you're trying to keep all three alive, trying to spread the hits, hopefully, among all three, so that you can continue developing your pack moves, pack attacks, all those things, okay? And obviously playing against them, you're trying to eliminate one completely instead of dinging them a little bit at a time each trying to you know take out one of those uh, uh monoliths that they are now the other side we're looking at ingen here you're going to have these traps okay and that's the main thing at the beginning of every round rubber muldoon may put out one of these traps which is just a token in his zone somewhere that's an empty space so he's standing there which is both brown and that gray so he can put one of these anywhere in brown, anywhere in gray. He might put it there. And that's very simple. Now, anytime an enemy passes that spot, it'll stop on it. We will remove the token. The enemy will take one hit, and Muldoon will draw a card. So these are great. Now, once it's triggered, it's gone. It's out of the game. And you've got, like I said, eight of these for the entire game. So... Muldoon is going to have everyone as ranged attacks, okay, whereas opposed to the Raptors are all melee fighters, of course. And so Muldoon is going to be setting traps in the way, is going to be uh, attacking from a distance, is going to be keeping his distance, attempting not to be ambushed. And you've got a few tools that are going to let you manage that as well. You've got the ability, for example, to do remote detonations. Uh, you have the ability to leap away at a moment's notice so that you can get out of a trap. Uh, you've got the ability to deploy um, these traps faster than once per round. You've got a few different things uh, that you can do. So, for example, this remote detonation that I mentioned here lets you choose a trap in the same zone as one of your engine workers. Um, deal one damage to each opposing fighter adjacent to that trap and then return that trap to the box you're not going to draw a card for it but you are going to possibly damage a group and damage of course without actually getting that opponent to step on the trap so those are some of the things that you are hoping to to do to to manage right you can uh, you know this one lets you call for backup place three traps draw a couple of cards you are managing to take down these raptors again ideally in order and stay out of a, a trap that they can set up for you just like you're setting up traps for them so there you go it's very interesting again the board really goes a long way into making this feel tight feel uh, deadly feel scary and i think it manages to do all of those things and they each each deck certainly has its own flavor as well let's go back up top let me give you some final thoughts for this. All right, that is Unmatched. I have to say, I like Unmatched. I think as a game system, as a, as a, a card game, as a combat game, as a tactical pseudo miniatures game, I think it's strong stuff. It's very enjoyable, quick, engaging, has a, a fantastic amount of flavor injected into it. I think this one is by and large, no exception to all those things. So let's talk about it, shall we? I'm going to start with the one minor, I got, you know, a bit of a negative I have with this, and then I'll tell you all of the great things about it. Because overall, I'm very, very much a, a, a positive, uh, you know, on this one. So the minor thing is that this one has 
a single board. It's a one-sided board instead of there being two maps, okay? Uh, the previous set that is most closely uh, related to this one would be this set right here, which is Robin Hood versus, of course, one of the one of the best of all time, Bigfoot. And this one has a double-sided board. I wish that they would have done the same thing for this one. Now, I know that this one, they could theme one board on Bigfoot, one board on a Robin Hood Sherwood Forest. In this one, they would both have to be themed on something Jurassic Park, but th that could have been done. So I wish that that had been the case, okay? Uh, everything else in here, I think, is handled extremely well. So let's talk about that, starting with the theme at the top. Obviously, if you're watching this, I'm going to assume uh, that you enjoy Jurassic Park, or at the very least are not uh, opposed to a game with that theme. If you don't like Jurassic Park, uh, you might still like this, but you're not really going to be showing up for the theme. You're not going to get into it as much. You're not going to get the puns on the cards like Clever Girl and, you know, all those things. So be aware of that. But I think the theme is handled extremely well. Even though it does have just one board, that board feels thematic, tight. And uh, the way the decks work feel thematic, tight, interesting. So no issue with the theme. The aesthetics here, wonderful as well. The game has a, a beautiful art style. Um, everything is clear, everything makes sense. I like that a lot. The game arc is interesting. This set specifically has a really neat tempo to it. The way that the two decks play against each other with the, you know, the Muldoon part being you want to keep your distance, set out traps, play the long game, basically. Uh, and then the other side trying to rush you, destroy you, uh, stay right in your face so that your traps can't be placed between us. Right? I mean, that's a big part of it. So, it's really interesting the way that plays out. The ease of play, it's strong because the powers are very clean. They make sense, they're game-changing, but they're clean. Okay? I love the traps. I like the raptors hunting as a pack. Having three heroes, basically, is completely unique so far across all of the unmatched uh, products out there. And there's a decent amount now. So, really neat, really distinct. This is not, and this is, I, I guess, one of the things I love about it, not just a new skin on unmatched. These are two decks that are truly well-designed and balanced. Lastly, tactics, strategy, luck. There's a lot here to get into. It is just two decks, but you can, of course, switch sides. You can play them. You, you'll get familiarity with the decks, which is going to help you do better and it become a little more psychological of a game and not just I smack you, you smack me back and forth, okay? So there you go. Overall, like I said, for two deck set, for a specific theme, for having a single board, um... This is still really, really strong. So for me, this product stands shoulder to shoulder with pretty much everything else that's come out before for Unmatched, and that's going to get a nine out of 10 from me. Great stuff. If you enjoy uh, Jurassic Park, you should definitely pick this up. Uh, if you you know want a, a two-player game set in that world, and keep an eye out for more stuff. From what I understand, there's more uh, sets in the Jurassic Park IP coming to the game. So there you go. Again, 9 out of 10 from me. That is, of course, a seal of excellence for this excellent game. That's it, everybody. My name is Z Garcia, and I'm going to see you on the next one.